For the last exercise in this chapter, we're going to use nested for loops to build a histogram of a set of grades. The grades are going to come from the grades.txt file we've been working with. So let me display that file for you again. Enter the wrong command. There we go. I've mixed the grades up a little bit. They were in numeric order. I've mixed them up, but they're the same grades that we worked with before. So what we want to do is loop through the file and for each grade create a histogram. Our histogram will be a series of asterisks, one asterisk for every five points of a grade because we can't really easily display 100 or 93 asterisks on our screen. So we're going to represent five points by one asterisk. So let's get started with the program. We're going to call it chap8ex2.py. We're going to use a variable named bar as the variable to hold the asterisks. So we're going to set it equal to empty string. Then our first for loop will loop through the grades file, grades.txt. Then the second loop is going to loop over a range starting at 1 and going through the total grade plus 1, again because we want to be inclusive of the actual number. So if the grade is 93, we've got to go int grade plus 1. Then, the way we decide if we're going to add a asterisk to our bar is we perform a modulus on the i value. So if i modulus 5 is equal to 0, in other words, if i is evenly divided by 5, then that means we can add a star to our bar variable, or an asterisk. I like to say star, easier to say. So that's what that line looks like right there. So when we've gone all the way through and added all the bars we need, or all the stars we need, for our bar. Then we're ready to print the bar. So we're going to print the bar, and then we also want to print the grade out by it so that we can see what the actual number is. And the last thing we need to do is we need to reset the bar variable to empty string to begin collecting the next set of asterisks. So let's save it, and then we're going to run it. And there's our output. So as you see, we've used a set of two for loops to recreate the bar chart. Here's the bar chart again. And that will end this exercise, and that ends this chapter on for loops. We will look at some of the other data structures that we covered in this chapter later in the course when we present a complete chapter on using lists, dictionaries, and tuples.